Hey everyone, welcome to the webinar that we're going to go over today, social media marketing. Basically what I'm looking to do and accomplish within this webinar series is I'm hoping to help you start from beginning to end how to set up a social media marketing campaign. Now, a lot of what I'm going to go over here today is going to be applicable to most of the social media marketing channels that you're familiar with. But primarily, I'm going to use Facebook and Instagram as my example here. Let's go ahead and get started. So did you know that over a million new businesses launch each year, yet nearly 40% fail in their first year and 80% within five? I'm Derek Schmidt, and I don't want you to become another statistic. That's why I started the Entrepreneur Bootcamp Podcast. I'm going to use real world experience and straightforward advice to help you navigate through the rough waters of entrepreneurship. Whether you're drafting your first business plan or aiming for new heights, this is your toolkit for however you define success. Let's dive in. Let's say you've got a business, you're interested in running social media ads for your business, and you're primarily looking at platforms like Facebook, Instagram. The first thing you're going to want to do, if you haven't already, is make sure that you have a business Facebook page. And you can just go to business.facebook.com to make sure that you have a page created. And when you visit that URL, if you do already have a Facebook business page created, you'll see on the left-hand menu where you've got this kind of administrative menu. And then you can navigate if you manage more than one profile. Of course, you can click the drop down here and navigate between the different profiles that you have access to. But specifically, what we're going to look for is the ads manager. And you can get to that by clicking on all tools from the left-hand side. And you'll see over in the advertise section where you've got ads, ads manager, audiences, some automated roles, campaign planner, create a pub, events manager, and instant forums. So there are a few different things to recognize right up front in the beginning. Boosting a post on Facebook and Instagram is not the same thing as running ads on Facebook and Instagram. In my opinion, it's only valuable to boost a post if you have a post that is newsworthy. You know, maybe you've got a, a mention or you're highlighting a specific um, service, product, promotion, uh, maybe a press release, whatever. That's when you want to boost that post and get as much attention to that post as possible, right? With the goal ultimately being like growing the engagement, maybe growing the followers. So for instance, you know, maybe we, well, okay, here's an example is Design Lao was re recently recognized as the top marketing agency in Wilmington, North Carolina by Wilmington Magazine, right? So they probably put a post out and mentioned us and then we put our own post out, kind of thanking everybody who took the time to vote for us because it was a voting network, but that would be an example of like maybe a post that I would want to boost. And the goal being like just getting more exposure around that post, likes, comments, et cetera. Now, when you're running Facebook, Instagram ads, there's usually a bigger goal that you're trying to accomplish. So that goal could be like, I want to drive traffic to my website, or I want people to go to my website and fill out my contact form or buy my products through my online store. Maybe your goal for your Facebook ad and Instagram ads is to grow your following, right? So maybe you're, you're running a campaign centered around getting more likes and followers on Facebook and Instagram. Whatever the case is, it's important to recognize that, as I mentioned, boosted posts is not the same thing as ads manager. Within ads manager, you'll actually find that you've got a lot more controls over the creative and who you're targeting as opposed to if you were to just go and do a post and follow that process. So the first thing I want you to do is if you're following along, as I mentioned, go to business.facebook.com. You'll click on all tools and we're going to look at the ads manager first. And so when I load the ads manager, you'll see in the upper section of this page, the ad account that you're working with. So you might want to look at this, make sure that you're editing the ad account from the actual business page itself and not your personal ad account, right? Uh, if you're an agency and you're man managing multiple clients, you may also see that you've got multiple clients listed under this ad account dropdown. So make sure you're editing the right ad account. And then from here, if you've ran ads before, you'll see a list of some of the campaigns that you've ran in the past. And then on the left-hand side, you're, you will have some more tools here, such as creating audiences, setting up your billing and your payments. So before we get into actually creating um, some campaigns and going through that process, I want to break down a couple of different things for you. If you, from within ads manager, 
if you click on the all tools section and you click on or find the events manager, that's usually going to be under manage. I'm going to go ahead and open this in a new tab because the events manager is how you are basically going to measure the effectiveness of your marketing campaigns, right? Basically what you're going to do here, and I'll go through this process with you in just a moment, but you're going to create a pixel and I've already done this, but we'll go through that process again. You'll create a pixel, uh, which is a tracking code that you're going to put on your website. And within that tracking code, that pixel, you're going to have it available on all pages of your website. So if you're on a content management system like WordPress or Shopify or Wix or Squarespace, it's generally pretty easy to have this pixel installed and where it's available across all of your different websites. But the second thing we're going to do is we're going to create a conversion event, which means, hey, I've got, you know, traffic came from this ad. They hit the pixel that's installed on my website, but then they got to some sort of a thank you page or they took whatever desired action I want to count as a conversion. They took that action and they hit the conversion pixel, which then Facebook reports on the conversion, right? And you can see here, just from the last couple of days, I've had four people click on the new getting started conversion event that we've set up in this specific ad account. Now to get started with this, you may need to click on the data sources. So if I hover over here on the left-hand side and click data sources, you should see the option if you haven't already to create a pixel. If you've already created a pixel, then you'll probably see a screen that's similar to mine. And this is where the pixel is installed and you can see that it's receiving some traffic, right? What I'd like to do is see if I can help you go through and create a pixel, let's say new website. And so what I've done here is I basically click on this connect data sources. I'll click web and next. It's going to give me the option to connect data from a data set. So I can choose, you know, if I've got a new pixel or a new data set, I can do that here. Otherwise I can just say test and click create. And once this is done spinning, this should give me the option on how do I want to install this? So you'll see my new pixels over here. It's being created. I can either connect it through one of the native integrations within Facebook. So I can just click on WordPress. If I have a WordPress site or Shopify or Wix, or I can connect it manually, depending on how comfortable you are with just putting code on your website, you may want to do the manual option if you've got a little more of a comfort level. Otherwise, you'll just use the native integrations to connect directly with Shopify or WordPress or WooCommerce. Personally, I prefer to connect it manually just because I feel like that gives me a little more flexibility of where this pixel is installed, how it's installed, and gives me control moving forward on where like the events are, are tracked, right? So in this case, um, I can choose to do the Metapixel and the Conversions API or just the Metapixel only, but whichever option you choose, you click Next, and then you can proceed to see the instructions on how to connect that specific API or pixel to the website. This should give you step-by-step -step instructions. So if I go through and I click finish, I would preview this HTML code here. Now let's say you're on a content management system. Um, I'm going to use WordPress for the example. So let's say you're on WordPress. You can go ahead and sign into the back end of your WordPress website. And once you're signed into the back end of your WordPress site, there are a couple of different ways you can install the pixel on your site. So you can do it. Sometimes you'll already have a plugin installed on the website. Other times it may be beneficial for you to add a plugin. You may even add it to your theme. This is specifically to my WordPress users. I, if you have a WordPress website and you don't know where to add this code, I would just add a plugin. And the reason why I'm suggesting adding a plugin to your WordPress site, especially when it comes to managing your scripts and your tags is because if you go to change your theme later on then these tags are tied to a plugin. So you don't risk losing your tracking scripts and your tags, right? So keeping your tracking scripts and your tags via third-party plugin is the way that I would go here. Uh, you can go to plugins, add new, and then in the search for where you're going to search for a plugin, just type in header and footer. This should bring up a few different plugins where you can add, you know, headers and footers to your website, which is ultimately what we're trying to accomplish here.
So let's say I want this one, insert headers and footers. I'm going to click install and then I'll click activate. Again, specific to my WordPress users, you'll probably find a new option over here on the left-hand side that gets activated when you do that. In my case, for this plugin, it's going to be under settings and I'll just click headers and footers. Now, if I go back to the instructions on how I insert this code, it says we need to put this code in the head section of the website. So I'll just copy this code. And here in my plugin where it says scripts to include in the header, I'll just paste that code in. Basically, when you're looking at this code, it's got the JavaScript file from Facebook, but it has my pixel ID. And then it's tracking anytime anybody clicks on my website, it's tracking it as a page view. This is important to know because later when we come back, we are going to add this conversion event for like somebody signed up, right? So I would click save changes here. I already have a pixel on my site, so I don't want to save it, but we would click save changes here and then come back over to Facebook and click continue. Whether or not you want to choose to turn on automatic advanced matching, I personally do, but this allows you to track information for people, you know, match your website visitors to people that are on Facebook. I generally keep this turned on and I keep all the default options selected. And then I proceed to continue. This is where it's going to help you set up an event. So this is, think of this as your conversion event, right? So for a service-based business like Design Loud, an event we might want to set up is somebody fill out a form and reach a thank you page. That might be one event, right? Contact us. We may set up another event for a clicking phone call or they click the phone number. You can proceed to click on open event setup tool, and this will walk you through like a step-by-step -step on how you can um, configure these events, or you can install this code manually. And again, just based on myself and my background and the type of flexibility I have, I generally install the code manually. When you get into doing this, uh, basically all you really need to see here is that you're going to add one more line item to that JavaScript that we had copied over. So if you're doing this from, if you've added this pixel via WordPress, via a plugin like this, this pixel is going to be installed on all pages of the website by default, right? Now this conversion pixel, I don't want to be installed on all pages of the website. Okay. I want this conversion pixel to only be installed on whatever the destination, the end URL is that people will get to, right? If I'm tracking like a thank you page, right? So I don't have a thank you page currently set up. So in this case, I would go quickly create a thank you page and I'll do that real quick. Thank you. I will go ahead and launch in this case, our page builder. And this will allow me to just quickly, you know, put together a page. You see. Now this specific page builder uses, let's see, Beaver Builder, which is a great plugin for like a drag and drop kind of custom out customizations and functionality. In this case, you know, I might throw in a quick message here, like, thank you for signing up. And I will do that now. Thank you for signing up. All right. Now the most important takeaway here is that I'm adding, so I'm going to drag and drop this HTML element onto the page. I'm adding that script tag. So because that JavaScript, that pixels installed across the website, I can add in my HTML module. I can do uh, open and closing some script tags and then tracking a specific uh, event. So purchase. I can pass through the currency, you know, so if membership is $30 in this example, uh, which it's not, I can pass that information too. And this is beneficial to you because you can also start to get a re return on investment report in your ads manager account, right? So you can see how much money you spend and how much money you potentially generated back to your business. Now, once I'm done here, I would just click save and then I would publish this page. I'm not going to do that now. And that would make this page live. Then my pixel should be set up and my thank you code should be set up. Now, if you're on Google Chrome, there's a extension you can install called Meta Pixel Helper, and this will help you troubleshoot any pixels you may have on your website. So to give you an example of basically what this does, and then I'll work through a quick example of a funnel for you. You can see when I visit the Design Loud website and I click on the pixel, I've got one pixel installed and it's currently tracking the page view. 
Now, if I go to the thank you page of Design Lab, you can see I still have one pixel installed, but it's tracking the page view and it's tracking the lead. So my conversion event is that we get a lead that came through. Basically, they filled out the contact form and they reached us thank you page. I want to tell Facebook, hey, this is a new lead. So if you don't want to bother yourself with uh, setting this up manually with the tracking pixels and conversion codes, those integration partners are definitely going to be the option that I would select if I were you. Uh, and then as you get into the actual conversion tracking and the event setup, you can just open the event setup tool. This would ask you what the URL is of the website. You can click on certain elements, say you want to track a specific event. So that is one of the most important things I think you can do on your website is setting up the pixel because then you can track things like page views, custom conversion, you know, getting started, lead as we saw there on Design Loud how all this kind of plays into like a bigger marketing strategy. And I've done this example before, but if you go to type in, or if you're creating content that ranks on search engines, right? And it's mainly informational value-based content. Somebody visits your website through a search engine, trying to get value from your blog post, for example. What's really happening behind the scenes, and as you see here, as they start to get tagged in your Facebook pixel, they start to get tagged in your Google pixels. And this is how you're able to remarket to people on Facebook and on Google and LinkedIn, et cetera. Now, how you accomplish that are audiences in Facebook. So now that we're done setting up the events manager, and let's assume you've got your pixel installed on your website. Once you get back over to the ads manager, this time we're going to click on audiences. So I'm going to open this in a new tab. And audiences is where you're going to be able to create different audiences, right? So you can see here where I've got an audience that I've created based on anybody who visits the website. And if I run through this audience real quick, this is anybody who visits the Entrepreneur Bootcamp podcast. I want to keep them in this audience for 90 days, right? So if you visited the site in the last 90 days, you're within this audience. I could technically create ads to start remarketing to you, right? Now, this one here is more of a custom audience that we've created, right? So you can see where like I'm targeting anybody in the US, ages 25 to 55. I want to target, and this is where the real power of, you know, the separation between a boosted post on Facebook versus like an ad account. In this case, I want to target people who match at least one of these. Education level is college grad, high school, some college associate's degree, some grad school, master's degree, professional, or some high school. They must also match these interests, small business, sales, email marketing, digital marketing, marketing, web development, startup community, SEO, entrepreneurship, web hosting, social media, et cetera. And they also have to match this. So specific behaviors, they're small business owners, they're Facebook payment users within the last 30 days, they're administrators on a Facebook business page, their new page administrators, et cetera. And they have to match an interest in marketing, entrepreneurship, or business or advertising. And they have to hold a specific title. So their employers, they're the owner, manager, or CEO, their founder, director, or CEO, co-owners, job titles, et cetera. If this part seems overwhelming to you, I've got great news because with the help of like AI now, this becomes really dialed in and really easy to figure out like what data points you can target. Then there's a third audience that I don't have available in this specific ad account, but just as powerful. And that's when you create a uh, custom audience by uploading a list of your customers. So if you've been doing email marketing where you've got a contact form on your website and somehow you can get those email addresses, and you can basically take that list of email addresses, this list of people, upload it to Facebook. And from there, you can either remarket to those people or you can create what's called a lookalike audience, as you'll see here. And a lookalike audience is going to basically take that list of email addresses, that list of users, and it's going to try to match everything it can based on all the data that Facebook and Instagram have available. So it's going to try to match the demographics, the psychographics, the interests, everything of the people that have already conducted business with you or reached out to you, right? So lookalike audiences can become very powerful because there may be certain interests or titles or something that we miss in, in our saved audience that may convert better for us, right? And generally when you're creating these ads, which we'll get to in just a moment, 
it's very beneficial for you to create split tests because you're going to want to test things like different audiences, different messaging around different audiences, different creative, different creative assets, et cetera. So real briefly, I'll go through each one of these. Let's say custom audience. You'll start by going to click create audience and we'll choose custom. You have the option to do a customer list. So if you've got a list of email addresses, maybe they fill out a form on your website, maybe they're newsletter subscribers, maybe they're customers, you got this quick bugs. Maybe you just gathered a list of leads and their email addresses. In any case, you can click on customer list here and this will walk you through how to set up and import that list to further go on and create like a lookalike audience or a remarketing audience. Now, if you've got the pixel installed on your website, you're probably going to want to choose website. And that's generally what we're choosing most of the time. But if you've got like an online store and you've connected the catalog to your store in order to show products and everything, you can also select catalog, offline activity, or it can be from specific things that have happened on Facebook and Instagram, like people have watched a video or filled out a lead form or, you know, participated in an instant experience interacted with an Instagram account or a Facebook page, et cetera. Again, nine times out of 10, you're probably going to want to choose website, especially if you're just starting out or customer list. I will click through to website and it is saying, choose which pixel you'd like to use here. So let's assume this is the pixel that I helped you create earlier. And this is the one that is now installed on the website. This is where you can target specific visitors to your website, but you can get really granular with this. And this is great for a number of different reasons, but let me show you for an example. So let's say I want to target all website visitors, or you can target people who have this visited specific pages on your website, right? So in this case, let's say I want to target people who have visited a specific page on my website. I want to keep them in this audience for 30 days. And let's say that one of the pages that I wanted to target Anybody who visited a URL that contains the word podcast. So I think on our, on this website, let me get through to that. There is an episodes page. So I'm going to copy this link address, come over here and basically remove the URL and say, I want to target anybody who visits a URL that contains the word episodes. Now, if I were to apply this to design loud. I would do the same thing. I'd say, all right, I want, I'm going to use the design level pixel. Anybody who visited a specific page with the word SEO in the URL, right? Or digital marketing in the URL. But then you can also continue to refine this by adding, and they have to have visited the about us page, right? The URL has to contain about us. So they've had to have had visited both of these URLs to be in this audience. Now let's say I want to exclude people who have already reached out, right? So maybe I want to exclude people who may have already reached like a thank you page, right? On my website. So I would choose exclude people here. Same option, people who visited a specific page and that page has to have had the words thank you in it. Okay. So you could say, I want to target people who have visited, you know, a page on my website that contains the word episodes, but I want to exclude anybody who has visited the thank you page. Basically, like if they haven't converted already, I don't want to include them as. Then you can name this audience. You can start using a naming convention. So if people who visited episode page, but not thank you, right? Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can get pretty granular with this. Um, maybe you want to target people who have visited the home page and the services page, uh, but not the thank you page. You know that those people are probably somewhat interested. Um, so you can start utilizing them for a remarketing audience. Now let me take a step back. Let's look real quickly at customer list. If I go and create a new audience and this is a custom audience and I proceed to click next here, this is where you can import from MailChimp. You can download a sample file. Basically, the only things you really need to include in here is the email. There's got to be a unique identifier here. So if you have a list of email addresses in a spreadsheet format, like your customers, 
upload them here. Facebook will walk you through the following prompts on how to match that specific information to what Facebook is expecting. And it'll take, you know, usually a few minutes to populate that list. And it should be ready at that time to create a lookalike audience. Now that we've got a custom audience, let's look at how we can create a saved audience. So if I click on create audience, and I go to saved audience. This is where I can create, you know, general audience. And maybe this is going to be around my branding, right? Or I just want to target people and get them interested. Now you can go here in the location section and you can choose where you want to target. So in my case, I'm going to choose like Wilmington, North Carolina. And there we go. Wilmington, North Carolina. You can see where there's a specific radius. I can increase or decrease that radius here. You'll see it's within a 25 mile radius of Wilmington, North Carolina. I can set the age range. So maybe I want age, the minimum age to be 25. Now I can exclude people from a custom audience that I've created. So maybe I want to exclude people who have already visited the website, right? And then I can also include people that are part of a custom audience. So maybe it's a lookalike audience. Maybe it's a custom audience that I've already created in the past. In this example, I only have website visitors. But as you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see here where I can choose what age range I want people to see these ads and what gender and try to match. And then when you get down in the detailed targeting section, this is where you can start browsing the different things like demographic interests and behaviors. So in this example, maybe I want to do demographics and I want to do field of study. And once this loads, I'm going to choose uh, marketing down a little bit more. I'm going to also choose MBA. Select there. And then I'm going to choose marketing and finance. I'll keep it super slim for now. Now I can back up and I can continue to do another one. So let's say demographics, financial, income, they have to be in the top 10% of the zip codes in the area or top 10 to 25%. All right, so how this is basically working is I'm saying this audience has to match any one of these. So they have to match either, you know, their field of study is marketing strategy or MBA or MBA marketing and finance, or they're in the top 10% of zip codes, or they're in the top 10 to 25%. So it's not saying they have to match this demographic field of study and this income. It's any of these. It can, it has to be any of these. Now, if I wanted to narrow that audience even further, which I would want to do, I would click on narrow audience and it's saying, so it has to match any one of these and any one of these. So if I go to browse and I go to interests, let's go back to financial income. This time I'm going to say top 10%. So I'll remove it here. And now what I'm telling Facebook and Instagram is that they have to match one of these demographics. So marketing strategy, MBA, MBA, marketing and finance, and they have to match one of these. So they have to be in the top 10%. I can continue to drill it down even further and they have to be interested in, let's go to business advertising. Here we go. So in order for somebody to see my ad from this audience, they have to match at least one item from each of these sections. Okay. Now, if you're stuck on what you can do here, there's a really great chatbot that we've created for target audience in the entrepreneur bootcamp community. And you can just basically go in there and plug in your website and any, even if it's very loose, any information you may have around your target audience, and then ask the chatbot to tell you what targeting you can add to the Facebook ads manager for this audience. And it'll tell you exactly you know, what demographics, what interests, what behaviors you can include as part of this campaign so you can make sure that you're me meeting the right people. Now let's assume this is done. I would click create and save, and this would allow me to save this audience to be able to come in and reuse it at a later date. All right. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is a lookalike audience. If you click on create audience and create lookalike, you should see here where you can choose a specific data source. I'm going to see if there's one I can, let's pretend this is the data source that I wanted to set. I could go down and drill it down to United States. So maybe this is the nationwide thing that I wanted to do. 
maybe I can drill it down to specific areas like Wilmington, Myrtle Beach, Raleigh, Charlotte, etc. Now, the way these lookalike audiences work is the higher the percentage you have here, the more loose the parameters are. So they don't necessarily have to match uh, this original audience if you're at a 9% lookalike audience. The goal here, and what I usually do is keep it at 1%. I want a 1% match of this audience that I'm uploading. Once you're done with that, you just click the create audience section here. And that would allow you to basically have an audience of people that look like your existing customers or leads that you can then remarket to. All right. So once you've got your audiences set, you've got your pixels set, the real fun begins, in my opinion, that's when you can go ahead and start actually creating some ads and some campaigns. So from here on the left-hand side, click on campaigns and I will go ahead and click create. Now, when you start creating a, a new campaign, you're going to have an objective that you'd like to accomplish. So this can be just brand awareness and Facebook will suggest, you know, with, I guess, which KPIs are most important. So in this one for awareness, you know, it's good for reach, brand awareness, video views, store location awareness, et cetera. If you get into traffic. It's all about getting clicks on your links and generating traffic to your website and your pages. Leads, it's about getting people to fill out their contact information. Sales, again, conversions, catalog sales. If you're an e-commerce store, Messenger, Instagram, WhatsApp, or phone calls. Most cases for a service-based business, I'm generally swayed towards leads or sales. If you're an e-commerce business, you're probably going to do sales or traffic. So in my case, for our, you know, example client here, I'll click leads and click continue. Now it's going to ask you about the campaign setup. Do you want to use the recommended settings or do you want to do a manual leads campaign? I believe there's more value to doing the manual leads because I have a little bit more control over the ad creative and where it's placed than the recommended settings. If you want to try out the recommended settings, you can most certainly do that. I don't think there's any problem with the recommended settings other than you lose a little bit of control. So in my case, I'm going to click manual leads campaign and click continue. And now you can see we've got our campaign created. So you can see campaign name. I'm just going to call this test campaign or demo campaign. You'll want to start adopting a naming convention that makes it easy for you to recognize these different campaigns. So maybe this is lead gen campaign or in most times what I'm doing is top of funnel campaign where the goal is just to get people to our website like link clicks and traffic. And then I'm doing a middle of the funnel campaign, which is more like remarketing to people and then a the bottom of the funnel if necessary. So definitely adopt a naming convention for this. If you're stuck on this, I would just start with top of funnel campaign and then just start creating campaigns to complement that as you start building up your audience for a remarketing audience. Now, as I scroll down a little bit more, if there's a specific category, so if you're in, you know, Industry has to deal with credit, employment, housing, social issues, or politics. You're going to have to select one of these categories. But scrolling down a little bit more, you can set a campaign spending limit. So let's say over the lifetime of this campaign, I don't want to spend any more than a $500, $1,000, $20,000 on this campaign. You also have the option here to turn on the Advantage Campaign Budget. So this will distribute your budget across the currently delivering ad sets to get more results, depending on their performance goals and the bid strategy. And you can also choose whether or not you want to implement AB split testing on these. Now you can implement the AB testing on, on the ad level, but this is asking if you want to do it on the campaign level. And you'll see after you publish this campaign, we'll take you to the AB test tool where you can finish creating that AB split test. So we're still going to do an A-B split test, but I'm going to leave this option unselected. If I hit next, this takes me into the actual ad set. Okay. So this is where I can start configuring my ad set. If you remember from any of the earlier videos, the hierarchy is generally you have a campaign and under a campaign, you have one or multiple ad sets. And then under each ad set, you have one or multiple ads. The ad set here is where we can start split testing things like the audience. So let's say, for example, I'm going to split test or part of this is going to be audience space. As I scroll down a little bit more here, 
audience controls. I'm going to go ahead and choose a specific audience. So let's say website visitors. And that's going to be my custom audience that I want to hit with this specific campaign. Again, I'm going to choose age. I want no less than 25, maybe, you know, specific location, Wilmington, whatever. Now I'm going to scroll up before I do anything else. And because I said, you want to have a naming convention, you want to name this based on what you're split testing. So I'm going to say website visitors, audience ad set. Okay. This is going to help me because as this ad set and campaign starts to perform, I'm going to be able to see which ads convert the best, right? Which creatives. And I'll take you through a finished example in just a moment. From here, you choose the conversion location. Where's the conversion happening? Is it going to be on Facebook through an instant form or through a website? I prefer website, uh, especially because that's where I've got my um, conversion pixels set up. So in my case, I'm going to choose website. Scroll down a little bit more. The performance goal is going to be the maximize the total number of conversions. And then if you click on pixel, it's going to ask you which pixel you would like to use for tracking this campaign. We set up a pixel at the beginning, so I would choose that pixel. And then which event do I want to track? I've got active events now for getting started. This is from that conversion, the event manager that we set up in the beginning. Once you have that set up and you tested it, it should show and be available to you here. As I scroll down a little bit more, this is where you can change things like attribution settings, like the click through attribution, the engage view, if you're doing videos and then the view through. Scrolling down a little bit more, this is where you can control the actual daily budget or lifetime budget for this specific ad set. So let's say this ad set, I want to spend $350 on over the course of the its lifetime. I want the ad set to run starting on the 21st and I want it to last 30 days. Okay. So over the course of this ad sets lifetime, it's going to run for 30 days and spend no more than $350. All right. Scroll down a little bit more. You can change the ad scheduling. Most of the time I do this. You can run ads on a schedule. And here's my logic behind this is most people who would be shopping for our products or services aren't going to be doing that at two o'clock in the morning. So I would come here and I would choose to show our ads on specific days between specific time periods to make sure that I'm really stretching that budget for this ad set, right? I don't want to waste any money by having our ads being shown to somebody at 3 a.m. when there's clearly no intention of them signing up for our product or service. Scroll down a little bit more. We've already kind of configured the audience controls. We've attached that to our custom audience. Actually, I can see what I've done here is I accidentally chose to exclude that custom audience, which you can do, which basically just means I only want these ads to show to anybody who has not visited the website. However, if I want this to show only to people who have visited the website, this is where I would use this little hidden thing here where it says use a saved audience and I choose one of my saved audiences. And when I do that, it should replace a lot of what I've got in here. So I'll just bump that back up 25 minimum age, still within the United States. And then again, if I wanted to be a little more granular in my control, I would exclude people who have already visited the website. So when I'm looking at this audience, basically what I'm saying is we're targeting this saved audience that I've got, right? With all these interests, demographics, everything, but I'm excluding people who have already visited my website. So I'm really doing what I can to make sure that budget, you know, is stretched. Um, scrolling down a little bit more, you can see this was my saved audience that I selected up above that hyper-focus one. So these are all the demographics and everything, all the activities to make sure that I'm really getting the most out of my budget. If everything looks good here, what I'm going to do is hit next. And this is where we start creating the ads themselves. There are multiple ways you can create these ads and you can do it relatively quickly. In this case, you know, I'm attaching it to a specific page and a specific Instagram account. If you've got that connected. You can also do um, a naming convention with the ad. So maybe this is image ad. And then the next one that I create is going to be a video ad. So this from a recording standpoint, 
it's going to let me see which ad set or which audience converted the most and whether the image or the video ad converted the most, right? When I'm looking at these KPIs. From here, you can choose to manually upload your creative, your images, or you can use the media that's part of your catalog. The format, single image or video. So single images, in my opinion, are cheaper. Videos get a little more expensive. The video ads to run you a little bit more. Carousel ads do really, really well. And this is that ad that you see that has the scrolling left or right kind of thumbnails of images. And then if you've got an online store, you can use the collection. In my case, I'm usually going to gear or lean more towards carousel or single image or video. But first thing you want to do is plug in your website URL. Uh, a good rule of thumb here is to use UTM tracking. So I go to Google and type in UTM generator. Usually any one of the first ones will do. You're, you're basically just looking for a way to track this in Facebook. So let's say I'm putting it in designwell.com. The source is going to be Facebook. Medium is going to be social. You can put anything here. This is really just an opportunity for you to identify. This one was the, what did I name that specific one? Website visitors audience. So I'll say website visitors audience, and then the UTM content, I can put image ad as an example. At the bottom here is where you get the UTM. This is going to allow you uh, to also track this in your analytics to see and kind of reverse engineer like what path this user took to get them to a conversion. But I'd plug that into the website URL form. And now you can start to see my ad starts to show previews on the right hand side. So here I can do add media. This is where I can start adding images and videos. So I'll just quickly go, go through this, see if I can find something that is valuable or makes it easy. Hit next, hit next here and proceed to done. All right, so now you can start to see my ad. Now, let's say, for example, I wanted to switch this to a carousel ad. So I'll click on carousel. Same thing, I can add cards and in my cards. In this example, I will use one, continue, and then I'll add another card, continue. And just to give you a preview, you'll see here, does this look familiar where you've got that carousel ad and you can scroll between each one can have its own heading and description, et cetera. So for the sake of this demonstration, let me go back to just single image, single video. We've got our website URL, which I pasted there. Now it's time to start writing the text. I choose to sometimes start with just populating this with a little bit of information. So you can see with, you can see what goes where, if you're confused on the placement of these. So text is usually what's included at the very top. It does sometimes get summarized. That's a great place to kind of address your reader, you know, reinforce their problem, set yourself up as having the solution. Headline is a great place to qualify them. Like what type of people are you looking for? Like this would be a great place for me to say, hey, marketers, here's your chance to grow, to level up, whatever, right? And maybe I'll create a split test there and pretend that I spelled it correctly. All right, from here, I would just start, you know, describing what it is that they're going to get. All right. Some typos there, but I did all right. Now, as I scroll down a little bit further, I can start to add the description. Now, before I select any of these text generations, this is Facebook's little native AI, follow the link to sign up for free. I'm basically, what are they getting? Right. I'm speaking to their problem. Maybe it's ever evolving trends in digital marketing. It's the rapid growth of AI. So I'm saying, Hey, if you're interested in leveling up your game, this is a place for you. I call them out directly in the heading. I'm also pre-qualifying to make sure that hopefully the right people, AKA marketers or the ones that are seeing this ad and clicking through it. And then in the description of the actual ad itself, I'm letting them know what they're going to get when they click that link and follow that link. Now. This is where you can really get into split testing. You'll see here where I have the option to add a text option. So I can add more than one primary text. And basically what's going to happen here is Facebook will mix and match the primary text, the headings, the descriptions, even the images and the videos. 
to try to see which ones convert more and then you start to prioritize that and show those more. Then you can create an automated role that says, all right, well, if you've got some that are performing, I want you to pause the other ones so that the budget of this overall ad set gets applied to the winning ads, right? The winning variations. Now you can say, I'll choose all of these and scroll down here. I want to use all the text variations. Actually, I might want to adjust this a little bit more because I would want to keep that qualifier in there. Level up your marketing game. Otherwise, people don't know what game they're talking about. Level up your entrepreneur game. Perfect. And then again, I can add more description options. You get up to five of each of these, right? So as I'm done with this, I would choose which call to action I want to choose. So this could be learn more, it can be sign up, shop now, see menu, download, you know, contact us, whatever the case is. You may even want to split test the different, the different options there. As I'm scrolling down, I can see the tracking is tied to my pixel and that I'm going to be tracking the getting started conversion event. Now I'm not done yet. What I want to do basically from here is let's say I would go in and create another ad. And this time I would do a video ad. I would keep that under a video ad. I would keep that under the website visitors audience ad set. Okay, so I'd just quickly go in. I'll walk through this with you for just a moment. Let's say I'm going to keep it in the campaign, duplicate your ad, duplicate your ad into another campaign. Okay. So I want to duplicate this into the same campaign, same ad set. So instead of calling this one image ad copy, and instead of having to go through and rewrite all of this, this one, I'm going to do video ad and a couple of things I have to update here. That is going to be in the media. This time I'm going to choose a bit, uh, video. So in this case, let's just roll with one of these. We'll pretend this all is trimmed down to the size it needs to be. And you can crop it from here just for the sake of time. I'm proceeding past this like done. All right. The only other thing I have to do here now is scroll to the website section right here. If you'll remember, we had our UTM tag, this is for tracking and analytics and everything. I just want to go to the end of this tag and I'm going to choose video. There we go. All right. Image ad equals video. All right. Once I'm done with this, now I can basically come up, go to this ad set. And this is where I can, again, start split testing more things, right? So let's say I'm going to duplicate this whole ad set. That's going to include the ads targeting everything. And in this case, I'm going to say general audience. So basically at the end of this experiment that I'm going to run for 30 days, I will be able to see which audience perform better and which ad perform better. And this is a very light split test. You can continue to add ads, more audiences. I and mean, it's not uncommon common for you to have like five different ad sets, 10 different ad sets, right? Maybe multiple campaigns and multiple ads under each one, but you want to make sure you're always split testing. As I scroll down a little bit more, this ad set is going to have the same lifetime budget or maybe you want to set a different budget for this. But really within the ad set targeting, this is where you're going to adjust the audience a little bit, right? So I'm going to scroll here and let's say I want to edit specific information like these, take out these demographics, take out these interests, activities, and this is where I could start browsing and creating basically another audience, another saved audience. So this one on the. As a quick example, I'll go through education level, high school grad, some college. And again, if you remember from when we were creating the audiences earlier, I can define it even further. So I say they also must map browse interests. They have an interest in advertising and business and finance, right? Continue to refine that. So this would be a different audience that I could utilize to split tests again, and then Additionally, we don't need to do too much here besides changing the UTM. So we've got our social campaign. Here we go. So I said website visitors audience, this time I'm going to say general audience. 
that would do that on the image ad and the video ad. All right, perfect. And then I could start split testing things. Like I can duplicate these some more and change out some of the images, try out more primary text, more landing page URLs. Like I said, I can duplicate this several times over to have the most success with this split test that I'm trying to conduct to figure out what works best with each audience, which creative works best. The end of that experiment is going to determine what my next campaign looks like that I create, because I'll have more data about what messaging resonated best with which audience, which audience performed the best, et cetera. So once I'm done with all of this, basically you can go in and hit publish and let that experiment run, check in a week from, you know, the time that you launch it, see how things are doing. You might want to pause some of the ads or some of the ad sets. Um, or you might find that you want to make some changes to some to see if you can get them to perform even better. So an example of this and what this looks like, this is basically the structure split testing different audiences. So you can see look like audiences, split testing different images. You can see how big this actually gets. Now for this specific example, uh, I didn't, we didn't go in through Facebook ads manager and create all of these, but it allowed us to rapidly create you know, some 200 different ads that we can split test different things like images, text, audiences, et cetera. For this example, there are a couple tools. There is Ad Espresso, which is a really good tool that allows you to rapidly create these split tests and also create your audiences, pixels, et cetera. This is a paid tool, but you can go to adespresso.com. It got acquired by Food Suite a few years back. Uh, this allows you to create the split test. There's another one called RevealBot. And RevealBot will help you also bulk create a bunch of different ads, as well as like setting up automated rules to help you with measuring the performance of those ads. Uh, as far as tools that go, uh, that help you with creation of these, there's a tool called Creatopy. I think it's how you pronounce it. And Creatopy.com basically allows you to create several image and video assets from one like framework, right? So you update the heading in this web place and it updates across all these different ad creatives and ad sets. Really cool tool and speeds up the process for creating image assets. Of course, there's Canva uh, for anybody who's familiar with Canva. And then if you need some cool videos that you want to use, there's placeit.net, I believe is the URL. And this basically allows you to like upload your logo and put it on like a shirt if you're selling shirts or merch. If you're a designer and you need to even mock up a file of business cards and what those look like, this is also a great resource for you. All right. So if you guys have any questions while you're reviewing this video or anything, let me know and I'll be more than happy to help. Uh, otherwise, I thank you very much for your time you spent with me today. And I hope you learned something and it helps drive the needle in your business. Thank you so much. Bye guys. Hey, make sure you subscribe for more insights. And if you like this episode, consider sharing it with a friend. Join our free community at entrepreneurbootcamppodcast.com and let's start building a great business together.